so as you can see there's the harness in its entirety and this is what I need for my conversion I have uh, the diesel engine harness that will be separate and I'll have to tie into here but this controls all the main XJ body functions with the exception of the engine so going up on the front you recognize these a couple of washer pumps this connects to the uh, washer tank that sits up underneath the fender those are the pumps for the front and rear motors this is the headlight harness plug uh, right here is cooling fan going up you see this messed up connector is the one left over uh, engine harness uh, ECU plug and this is what ties into the body uh, the other two ECU plugs aren't shown here they're part of a totally separate harness for uh, just the engine control so we don't need those at all it's totally separate it's actually only zip tied to this harness so I was able to cut a few zip ties and then get it off moving on in this is the C101 this goes in above the driver's left foot it's got a rubber grommet that pops into the firewall and this hooks up to the dash wiring harness we've got a couple of grounds these are important for everything behaving properly on the XJ harness sometimes these are dirty and people have electrical problems because of these uh, we have a brake, uh, brake reservoir sensor. This goes through the firewall and that rubber grommet here. You see the tube. This is for the wiper motor. This one, it comes through the firewall near the transmission tunnel, kind of above the driver's right foot. This is the plug for the transmission computer. I won't need this, so this will be able to come out. These couple of plugs go down to the AW4 automatic transmission so these three plugs in this ground I won't need here I may be able to get rid of the ground not sure what it splices into I'm gonna pull back this harness and pull these wires out simplify it and we'll see if I need to relocate the ground this goes to uh, an evap solenoid over on the passenger side of the firewall this should be an AC uh, pressure sensor on the canister this is for your engine light. This I need to keep by now. We've come over to the passenger side. This is in the top right corner of the firewall on the passenger side. And these plugs come in and plug into the fuse box that's on the side of the passenger footwell above the right passenger foot. Power distribution center, pretty self explanatory. This is where the main power comes in to the whole harness system. So there are battery cables that attach to this and the battery and the starter. But I'll just need to get power from my battery there. Uh, whatever that was, it was unused. This may have gone to the alternator voltage regulator. I think this one went to cruise control. And this one was uh, another AC high-low pressure switch. I don't remember what that one is. And then this one is the outside air temperature sensor. So that is the whole of the XJ harness. See, I've already started marking a few things with yellow tape that I don't need. And like transmission, I'll go ahead and mark that. Go through the rest of these plugs and decide how my wiring is going to work. But for the most part, I'll be able to uh, remove some of this, clean it up, and then look at integrating it with the diesel engine harness. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the diesel engine and the diesel engine harness. As you can see, I do have the diesel engine sitting in the Comanche engine bay. It's a surprisingly tight fit for being a four-cylinder. It's a tall engine. And as you see, I cut the pinch seam a little bit back there and pounded it out to get a little bit of clearance on the engine. And right now my transmission's sitting a little low, so when I get the transmission mount done, this will sit up a little bit higher and give me better clearance. It's also pretty tall you see looking across here this just barely clears my hood on everything so I don't have to modify my hood so this is sitting in place so now you can get an idea about where the harness needs to run um, the, the harness is a little bit uh, different than the XJ in that it's it was one engine harness that then plugged into the uh, KJ harness here so all of these plugs that's my interface so on the XJ harness, the engine, the ECU had two plugs that went 
to the engine and one plug that went to the body. Here, the engine harness just plugs in. And on the XJ, it's bridged across those couple of plugs. So what that means is that these plugs here, there's certain functions that go in. And you see I labeled them at one point. Uh, I know what all these things are. It's power, it's grounds, it's AC signals. What I need to do is I've got a mating plug for it here. And I'll plug that mating plug in and then i got a pigtail. I'll be splicing and soldering that into the extra harness. So, KJ, this sits all over here. I'm going to find a place to put it exactly. I don't think I need this plastic sheath holding it. And then the harness runs over the top of the engine. See, it runs to the fuel injectors up here. This bit comes down. This was a mass airflow sensor plug. Uh, this is the viscous heater plug right here for this guy. And then it comes over the top. There's a couple of sensors on the back side of the engine. Can't see too well right now. Map sensor, fuel rail pressure sensor. And we got the whole rest of the harness. Comes on over. Uh, who knows what that was. Maybe AC plug. Something's kind of hard to tell right now. Uh, this was for the drive-by-wire throttle system. So the diesel Liberties have uh, a cable, a foot cable coming up from the driver's foot. And then there's a sensor that sits up here in the engine bay this plugs into and it's like a box with a cable coming into it that all it does is read the, um, the pedal position. And then over here I have a couple of Bosch ECU plugs. So the, the engine I'm using used a Bosch ECU, it uses a Bosch EDC 15, kind of Bosch standard stuff. And it'll end up sitting somewhere up over here kind of like the XJ1 did, but I'll have to figure out exactly where. Again, I'll probably be pulling off the sheathing right here because it doesn't make sense on the uh, NJ body. And then we also have a battery harness. So as you can see, a battery would sit roughly over here that's swapped from uh, the gasoline Cherokees. So what I'll probably do is grab a battery box, put this over here, and keep using this harness because it's all heavy gauge wires meant to work with this. Runs down to the starter for ground power. Um, and like this, this fella is a nice big heavy duty wire gauge and this was for the glow plugs. So I'll have all this, I'll keep the battery here and then we'll integrate this into the Cherokee wiring harness, which is a little bit swapped because I have my battery over here, but on the Cherokee, the power distribution center and battery used to be over here. So I'll probably end up just running one thick gauge power from the battery cable back along the firewall to the Cherokee power distribution and putting it here. I don't want to move, put the battery over here like it was on a stock Cherokee because then I have to extend my battery uh, wires way over there. So I have to run thicker wires longer. The other reason is that the turbo's over on this side. So on both the diesel Liberty and the diesel Cherokee, uh, the intakes were over here. So if you ever see uh, Diesel Liberty with the snorkel. The snorkel's always on the passenger side, or I guess right side, because you might be in Australia if you see one, but it's on the right side of the vehicle. Snorkel comes in, goes through an airbox, goes to the turbo. So that's the case for both the, the original factory Diesel Cherokees and the Diesel Liberties. So I'm going to keep this area open. That way I can figure out some space for an air filter. I don't know if I'll do a snorkel or not, and i got to figure out some piping to go down to it. But before then, what I need to do is get these harnesses integrated. So the diesel harness will sit here. I got to plug in what I got to plug in with it. I can take and get these plugs and I'll splice them into the XJ harness somewhere. And I'll basically, if you see here, I got a mating connector for it. And this mating connector will be what I end up putting into uh, the XJ harness. So that way I can always unplug this harness if I need to for servicing anything or and whatever work I need to do in the future, this harness won't be hard soldered into the XJ harness. I'll still be able to pull it out and do what I need to on it. Um, pretty much the only reason I'd ever need to pull this harness out, as you see it runs over the top of the engine. Uh, I've done work on diesel liberties and you have to pull this harness over, flop it out of the, out of the way, and then you can get in and pull out the injectors and the valve cover and the head or anything. So if you ever need to do that style of work with the engine and the vehicle, you can pull that harness back and out of your way. So I do want to be able to disconnect it and have that ability to service it in the future. So that's the short of it, what I need to do for wiring. There's a lot of little specifics in it where power goes and where ground goes and exactly what signals cross, but 
in general I'm going to be able to take and make an interface plug on the passenger side and interface it into that stripped down Cherokee wiring harness. Uh, devil's in the details, I still got lots of little things to figure out like what I'm going to do for battery box and you know where I'm going to mount the Bosch ECU exactly but overall that's the gist of it. Thanks for watching.